Hey everybody, I thought I would take a moment here to talk about the minor in possession charge. I've been watching a lot of Twitter lately, and I think a lot of pro Kyles have gotten a little bit confused on this issue, and they're making claims that are simply not true. Now, I'm not exactly blameless in this either. I've gotten confused as well, and it wasn't until recently that I started thinking about this situation, and it became clear to me. So I thought I would take this moment, explain what happened with the minor possession charge and how to go about framing this to anybody that wants to pick a fight with you verbally over Kyle Rittenhouse's possession of the rifle. Hello out there, I am trying to get through. With his powerful brain waves cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. Okay, so here's what happened. Um, we all know the issue with 948.60, and that although it looks like at face value that Kyle is guilty of possessing a rifle at too young of an age, we also know that there are three exceptions that we have to take into account. Now, these are not written as exceptions. The, uh, the terminology, the lingo, is a little funky, but I think we can do pretty well here by just kind of considering them as exceptions. So let me go ahead and lay it out here. 948.60 says that if you're under the age of 18, you cannot possess a dangerous weapon. Of course, you read a little bit further down, and it says that, well, not so fast. If the rifle is long enough, and if you're at least 16 years of age, and you're not in violation of a statute requiring a hunting permit, you're not guilty. And I know that a lot of people are going to complain about uh, the wording I'm using here, but I think that's pretty close. Okay, so Mark Richards writes up a motion that says, we want you to drop the charges because A, Kyle was clearly holding a rifle that was long enough. Clearly, he's at least 16, and he doesn't need a certificate of accomplishment because he's not hunting. And, of course, Binger wrote back saying, not so fast, even though he wasn't hunting, he still needs that certificate of accomplishment. And we could go back and forth about those two arguments all we want. It turns out, it doesn't matter. So Mark Richards files this motion, and what does the judge do? He shelves it. He's going to look at it later. Now, a lot of people have been wondering, why did he wait until the very last moment to drop the charge against Kyle? Well, I have two theories. One, he simply forgot about it. Or two, he figured that you know, with his uh, brain power and his understanding of legal scholarship, he was going to be able to settle this thing no problem. And so when he got to the point where he's crafting the jury instructions, he would look at Mark Richards' motion, he would look at Binger's response, and from that, he would make a decision and write the jury instructions accordingly. This would explain why he shelved this thing until the very last moment. So now he's writing the jury instructions. And of course, what would that look like? Well, first, he would tell the jury that you are to determine if Kyle was under the age of 18 and in possession of a dangerous weapon. Everybody in that jury would have said, of course he was. But then the instructions would have continued. The, the instructions would have gone on to say, and this is really important, and you are to determine whether the defendant's rifle was long enough. If these things are true. If Kyle was under the age of 18, was in possession of a dangerous weapon, and the barrel of that rifle was too short, you are to convict him. Failing that, we go to the next test. Uh, the next test would have been basically, we go back to the very start, if he's under the age of 18, and if he's in possession of a dangerous weapon, and the next question is, was he under the age of 16? And of course, the jury would have said, well, no, okay. So therefore, that would have been an easy one. But then the judge is trying to write the jury instruction for the third stipulation, the hunting certificate. And I have a feeling the judge found it really, really difficult to do. 
while he thought that this was going to be an easy thing he could do maybe the night before, like when you're doing your homework late at night, you figure it's only a one page essay. I can punch this thing out in no time. I think the judge did a little bit of that. And guess what? It bit him in the ass because he found it really, really hard. Now, keep in mind, the judge's task is to write the jury instructions in a way such that if the defendant is found guilty, that the jury instructions are not going to be gator bait for an appeals court. Judges hate to be appealed. And therefore, he wants to make sure that this jury instruction is protective of the defendant's rights as much as possible. But he couldn't do it. There was no way that he could craft the jury instructions that would make sense to the jury. He couldn't even figure it out for himself. So he sort of informally applied the rule of lenity Basically, when you have a law that's really confusing, uh, the tie goes to the defendant. In this case here, he decided, since the jury can't be trusted to answer the question about this third stipulation, because I can't even figure it out, then I'm just going to forget it. So the jury is really going to be asked about the first one, whether the rifle was long enough. Uh, the second one, whether he was 16, they may not have even had to do that one. He was clearly over 16, and so that would have been a slam dunk for the defense. So, in a sense, the length of the rifle was a loose end, the one that the judge had to simply tie up at the end. So he went to the prosecution and said, look, um, do you really want to take this thing to the jury? Uh, and the prosecution basically said, well, the jury can decide, they can measure the length of the rifle, and they can determine whether the defendant was in violation of this stipulation. And the judge came back and said, look, this is ridiculous. The, the jury doesn't need to measure the length of the rifle. That's a factual result that we can get from an expert. We'll just bring in a gun expert. He can measure the length and tell the jury what he found. And of course, the, the expert would have found that the rifle was long enough, and, and Binger and Krauss knew it. Once they heard that, they basically said, okay, you got us. Uh, the rifle is clearly long enough. So this left the judge with, the prosecution admitting that the rifle was long enough, obviously Kyle being over the age of 16, and the jury not being allowed to determine Rule 3, the uh, hunting certificate deal. At that point, it was over. And so the judge ruled that he was going to throw the charge out with prejudice because there was no way to craft jury instructions centered around the third stipulation. Now, where are the pro Kyles getting it wrong? I mean, all you pro Kyles out there are saying, wait, now we are, we've already known that, right? Here's the problem. The judge never ruled that Kyle was in legal possession of the rifle. He simply dropped the charge. He didn't want the jury to even go into deliberations on it because there was no way for the jury to be able to decide on such something that was so murky. And so the judge never said that Kyle Rittenhouse was in legal possession of the rifle. He simply basically said that if Kyle was breaking the law, the law was not enforceable. The, it could very well be that the legislature in Wisconsin meant for everybody uh, under the age of 18 to have a hunting certificate if they wanted to possess the rifle. The trouble is, is that even if that is within the spirit of the law, the law is not enforceable because of the rule of lenity. Therefore, if you're a police officer, you might think that this person's in violation of the law. There's no point in arresting him because the law is not enforceable. Any conviction would almost certainly be overturned by an appeals court. And why is that? Well, when you have the longest sitting judge in Wisconsin co totally confused on what this Rule 3, this third stipulation even means, there's no chance that you're going to be able to convict anybody. Now, I say that, but keep in mind, everything has gotten real political. So with the right political makeup on an appeals court, hey, there's a chance that they could still come back in and say, uh, no, um, we all know what they meant when they put in the rule three here, the third stipulation, they meant that you had to have a hunting certificate to even possess a rifle, even though it's not clear at all. So where is the mistake made? When you are a pro Kyle and you're going on and saying that uh, carrying a rifle at the age of 17 is clearly legal, it is not. 
it's up in the air, it's still questionable. Another kid arrested in a different scenario in a different court could very well be convicted. It has not been decided that a 17-year-old can carry a rifle in Wisconsin. However, I don't think any district attorney would be stupid enough to even try to prosecute that because obviously an appeals court would probably overturn it. Well, you never know. But whatever the case, I hope that kind of clarifies things a little. The judge did not rule that Kyle was in legal possession of the rifle. He basically refused to even have the jury decide. Why? The law is just too complicated. I almost forgot to put this in the video. So if the sound sounds a little bit different, you'll understand why. But uh, what do you do with people when they say that Kyle was clearly in illegal possession of the rifle? The truth of it is, is that no authority has ever declared that he was illegally in possession of the rifle. He was charged for it. But while the judge never did say that Kyle was in legal possession of the rifle, no one has ever declared that he was in illegal possession of the rifle. So when someone says that he wasn't carrying the rifle legally, by what authority are you making that claim? And if they cite the statute, be sure to cite the exceptions to the statute as well. And the fact that no entity, no court has declared that Kyle was in illegal possession of the rifle. It's a baseless claim. Like my video, subscribe to my channel.